Hello, my name is Corey Yoder. I am here at the Fat Quarter Shop studio, and today I'm gonna to be talking a little bit about some of the supplies that I like to use just to streamline and make my piecing and quilting process a little bit more fun for myself. I have been quilting for probably I'm gonna say 20 years, something like that. It's been a little while, and so I'm not a super gadgety person, but there are some things that I find I really like to have close by my sewing area when I'm working. So we're just gonna dive right on in. My um, rotary cutter of choice is the Olfa, and I like a 60 millimeter size, which is the big size. A lot of you might use the 45 millimeter, that's that smaller size. I almost always use the 60 millimeter, and that's just what I find that I like. I don't know, I feel like it makes me go faster. You've got a bigger, a bigger uh, surface area and you can just zip right along. I don't know if that's true or not, so don't quote me on that, but I do like using that 60 millimeter. Another a tool that I always have by my sewing machine are the Clover Wonder Clips. What I really like using those for mostly is for binding. I like to um, just keep everything tucked in nice and tidy. I like them better than using pins when I'm sewing down binding. If I need to pin, I'll just um, use the Wonder Clips instead of that. And the other thing that I really like using them for is if I ever need to label fabric pieces, another one of the tools I like is the Alphabetes from Fat Quarter Shop, and I will use those, and then I'll use the Wonder Clips just to kind of keep all of the pieces together along with whatever letter I need to denote that piece of fabric. So those are always by my machine. I usually have a handful just right by my sewing machine, another handful on my cutting table, and I can use them whenever I need to. Um, and then threads. So I love buying threads. I really feel like you can have just as much fun buying threads as you can buying fabric. There's lots of colors and I think we all love color as quilters. So I have been really enjoying the Aurafil 12 weight thread. This is my Sunny Stitches thread box with Aurafil. And these are all 12 weight threads, which are perfect for hand quilting. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know that I'm a big hand quilting fan. And if you haven't watched them, you need to go check those out so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but these are some of my favorite colors and just the warm sherbety palette that I like working with. Um, so I always have threads close by because you never know when you want to bedazzle something with hand quilting. Um, let's talk about pins next. So I have jumped around on favorite pins. Right now I like these magic pins and in my opinion they really are magic and they just pin. They're nice and long. They pin everything together so well. I do prefer a longer pin and so um, these fit the bill and they have such a nice little grippy end and it's not one that's super bulky. Sometimes I will sew over a pin. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say that, but sometimes that happens. So if, if it does, nothing gets hung up on the pin head, which, which has happened to me previously. So I really like the magic pins. Um, cute pin cushions. If you have pins, you're gonna need a cute pin cushion. These little guys um, I made using my Sugar Creek fabrics just a mini charm and I used um, the construction techniques from my uh, patchwork magnets pattern. So a cute pin cushion, no matter what pin cushion it is, but something cute by your sewing machine is an essential in my book. Um, we'll just move on to this tool up here. This is the Clearly Perfect Angles Seam Guide and what it does, and it saves me so much time, is I never have to mark any diagonal lines for flying geese, for half square triangles, for flip and stitch corners, for joining binding strips. Anytime that you see a pattern say, mark a diagonal line on the back of 5,000 background squares, you don't have to do that if you have this on your sewing machine bed. Uh, it's a favorite tool of mine and I wouldn't be without it. It statics right down to any sewing machine that has a glossy surface. Now I know that not all of you have sewing machines with a glossy surface. I actually have two machines, a Juki that has a glossy surface and I have a Bernina that has that matte surface. So this will not work on a matte surface. And so I also have the Lori Holt Seems So Easy. Uh, cutting guide. It serves the same purpose as the Clearly Perfect Angles. You put it on your sewing machine bed and it eliminates having to draw any of those diagonal lines. So that's something that you want to check out if you're unfamiliar with that product. And then just a couple more things here. 
my Mark Be Gone marker. I use this for marking everything, hand quilting, applique placement. Anytime I need to mark something, this is what I use. It's a water soluble marker. I always have several of these on hand at any given time so that I can mark whatever I need to. Uh, it comes out with water and it's just a really nice marker to have on hand. I've never had trouble with it getting permanently on my quilt tops, so it has been a, an essential tool for me. This little guy is something that you might not have used before. So this is the Clover Pendant Thread Snipper Tool. And what it does, I, I use it in maybe a little bit of a different function than other people, but what I use it for is when I am chain piecing and you have, I just go to town and I'm chain piecing, so sometimes I might have 50 or 100 or however many pieces long that need snipped apart. And I'll let you in on a secret. I used to, when I had big long chain piecing chunks, I would pay my daughters a penny per snip to unsnip all of my chain pieced pieces. And they thought that was great. Like they would do 100 snips and they'd have a dollar. And I was getting my chain piecing cut apart and they were getting to participate. But what happened is sometimes they'd get a little rogue with their snipping and I would start losing little corners of fabric in between my pieces. So what I found is this little guy is just delightful to snip apart all of those threads. It's actually a little mini rotary cutter and it's notched out around the whole perimeter of this gadget. And so I have a long chain piecing and really just a flick of your wrist and all of those um, threads get snipped. I just go down the row. I've tried different methods of um, snipping those chain piecing threads and this is the one that I found to be the fastest. I don't lose any corners and everyone is happy. So I always have this on hand. I usually have one by my sewing machine and one on my ironing board. So depending on where I need to snip apart at, I've got one in both spots. That's probably, this, this guy is probably one of my most essential things because it saves me so much time and it's something that a lot of people don't think about having on hand. Um, and then the last couple things that I like to use are rulers. I often will have a Creative Grid six and a half by 18 and a half inch ruler. This works really well for a lot of different sizes, so I use that a lot. And then the Stripology rulers. There's, I have a small one and I have the larger one. Both sizes I have at home. The small one works really well for trimming up pre-cuts, layer cakes, charm squares, those sorts of things. The larger one works really well if you are cutting um, a lot of the same size of squares. That's really what it's designed for, is cutting a bunch of the same size pieces. So if, if you're cutting and it says cut um, five strips two inches by the width of fabric and then subcut those strips down into whatever number of squares, these rulers have vertical grooves in them that you run your rotary cutter up through so you can cut your subcuts without having to move your ruler around. And it really does streamline your cutting. And um, I put off buying one for a little while because I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it. And then someone lent me theirs to try out. And after I tried it out, I went out and bought myself one probably the same day because it was just, just magical. So I always have those on hand too. And cute fabric is a must. You gotta have cute fabric to work with. The layer cake is my pre-cut favorite size. I like working with that size best. And the last thing uh, is I really like to have a cute bag to store everything in. This is the um, Sew Together bag by Sew Demented. And it is the cutest little bag. You guys may have seen these before, but the nice thing about them is they have all of these little zippered compartments inside the bag that you can then tuck things in. So I tuck things down in every one of those zipper compartments and then in between. I use it a lot for hand quilting, but I know they work great for storing um, like supplies for English paper piecing or um, anything that requires, you know, little little whatnots that you need to store in. And I know my mother-in-law keeps talking to me about making one of these bags for her and she is not a quilter. So she obviously has some other little purpose for wanting one of these. So it even works for people who aren't quilters that just want a cute bag to store everything in. And then you get to mix and match your zipper colors and your fabrics. So this is another essential in my book. And that, kind of sums up my hand or, or my piecing essentials. If you wanna see me use some of these products, be sure to check out my other videos I have with Fat Quarter Shop. Um, I've used, I think, just about everything here somewhere. So be sure and check those out. And thanks so much for following along.
Mm-hmm.